Hey guys, this is Zero here again with another anime vlog review. Today I'm going to be talking about the controversial, well, not really that controversial, I guess, Onii, um, which is that, that's actually the short form of the name. The full name is, and I, I'm going to try to pronounce this, Oninchan Dakedo Aisai Ariba Kankenai Yone, which in English means, as long as there's love, it doesn't matter if he's my brother, right? So, yeah, this is a Syscon uh, series, or uh, or you might see it, you know, as a Brocon series. I don't know. Um, basically, it's a slice of lifestyle anime that has to do with um, siblings, or in this case, a sibling who is in love with their sibling, and I don't mean like. You're my brother, I love you. You're my brother, I want your dick, sort of thing. So, <laughs> um, so I'm not big into the Syscon stuff. And I actually mentioned this anime in my Orimo review. Uh, and um, this show, um, it's not... It's not that bad. I thought it was going to be a lot worse than what it was. It doesn't do the... Th it. Let me just put it this way. It doesn't go kiss ex cis risque. Um, which is why uh, there, there was a lot of controversy when the show first started because the opening theme song has some very suggestive material in it. Or the opening... Not the theme song. The, uh, the opening sequence has some very suggestive uh, material. And I guess that's what got people a buzz about it. Um, I avoided this show for a while just because it's not my thing. The shows about incest are not my thing. But, um, you, co you come to understand where the characters are coming from. Um, and it's not just all about incest. Let me just start that off. It's, that's not all about it. So, anyways, I'm going to start talking about the characters and such. I have notes around me as well so okay so this um the main character his name is uh himno koji akito um he's a second year in high school and he has recently transferred to um uh the saint Lili liliana saint liliana high school which is the school where his uh sister goes uh, who is the same age as her as him, and her name is Himenokoji Akiko, so Akito and Akiko. Um, and six years ago, they were separated. It wasn't really clear as to why they got separated, but I think like their parents split up or something like that, um, or maybe one of the parents died and one of them had to be one of the kids had to be adopted by another family. It's not a hundred percent clear, but. Um, Basically, um, they got split. They got split apart from each other six years ago. And Akito made a promise to his sister that he would uh, do what he can so they could live together again. He would work his hardest so they could live together again. And that really inspired. Uh, that really inspired Akiko, and it made her love him more than just see him more as just her as his as her big brother because Akito's slightly older. Not in age, but... Oh, well. Um, and that uh, hopes of one day that she would get to live with him again. But she starts seeing him as more of a romantic interest because of that, instead of just as her older brother. Um, it's like the same thing, like twins who... You know, one gets born a couple minutes earlier than the other one, so... Um, they're the older brother, yada, 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 or something like that. Um, however, there's something else that has to be talked about with this, and I'll get to that in a moment. Um, okay, so those are the two, and basically, Akiko is obsessed with, uh, Akito, to the point where she pretty much, at every point, tries to seduce him, even though Akito's like, you're my sister, I only love, I love you as my sister, I'm not going to love you in that way. But she continues on. She won't give up. So, um, 
uh, on the flip side, Akito, how Akito supports himself and his sister is he is secretly a writer of incest love novels, which his sister is actually a fan of. He has to use an alias so that she, he, she doesn't find out it's him who's writing the stories. And we should not get the wrong idea here. He even says in the start of his books, do not, he, like, this is a work of fiction. He even says to his editor at one point, who he has to explain when she finds out who uh, his sister is, that I don't mix fiction and reality. Which, uh, if you've seen, if you saw my Oromo review, that was a big thing that they always said, don't mix 2D and 3D. Same sort of thing. He doesn't make fi mix fiction and reality. These are just stories to him so he can make money. And he's a pretty accomplished author, which is pretty funny about it. So, um, he uses this alias and he's n and he doesn't mention what he does for work to anybody because he wants to keep it secret, obviously. Um, but yeah, those are those two characters. And they also, the two of them live in a student dorm together, which is basically an old Japanese house. But they're not alone. They're also both part of the student council of the high school, and they live with the other student council members in, this, in the building. However, Akito is the only guy. So you know where this is going. It's going harem style. So, Alright, so one of the other girls, um, the vice president of the student council, um, Anastasia Nasahara, um, who also goes by Anna, and she's the tsundere slash um, pampered rich girl of the group, but she acts more as a mightier than now than a uh, rather than I am. Uh, I can't do anything for myself, but she really can't do much for herself because whatever she constantly says. Uh, one of the things she constantly does, she uses a lot of verbal traps. She usually goes when Akita and them talk to like instead of talking to me with my last name, refer to me as Anna. And Anna in Japanese means whole. And then when he's like, fine, Anna, she responds with, oh, to think that you would call a woman a whole. <laughs> what kind of pervert are you? And he's just like, stop using verbal traps. Um, I'm going to say about this character, this character likes to talk and talk and talk. And she has most of the time the same vague expression when she does smile, it's kind of cute, but it's it doesn't happen that often. But my problem with this character is, because she likes to talk so goddamn much, every time she has a seed, it just drags on and on and on. And it overstays its welcome, and I'm just like, God damn it, shut up! <laughs> like, they're... For these only being 30-minute episodes, they feel longer when you watch them. And... Anastasia's constant going on and on does not help that at all. Oh my god. Um, so let's move on from Anastasia and go on to uh, Ginbei Sawator, Sawatari. Ginbei, or Gin, as she's referred to in most of the series, is... Um, was Akito's best friend, and still is Akito's best friend, um, since, uh, f for six years, since the split between Akito and Akiko, um, and they, and, and, uh, Ginbei started out as this, like, prodigy student who basically could do whatever she wanted because, um, she said so, and Akito wasn't having any of that, he wanted to be her friend, not, uh, of course, at this point, and... Even if you didn't put a skirt on her, you wouldn't be able to tell. She has a very boyish appearance. And because and because of the way their uh, school was, boys and girls wore the same uniform. So he didn't realize that Ginbei was a girl at first. <laughs> Strangely enough. So, um, regardless of that, they're really good friends. And, he's the one, and she's the one that uh, Akito can be most honest with. Um... And, uh, as part of the, um, council, um, she, uh, is the secretary, I think. Secretary? Uh, I don't know. Um, 
I forget. I think she's the secretary, if I remember. She joined the student council. She actually moved when she found out Akito was moving so they could still be together. Uh, more on that later. Um, next is Arashi uh, Nikaido. Um, she's the third year at the school, and she's the student council president. Everybody just refers to her as president. Um, and she's basically... She is what I would like to call the mix of take Yoko from Gurren Lagann's body and Kamina from Gurren Lagann's mind and put them together and then also put tons of sexual frustration on top of her. And that's what you get. Um, she also ha wears an eye patch which covers one of her eyes. Um, they sort of say why, but it's I think it's brought off of, as a lie. So, uh, anyway, um, she's from a prestigious family, but, uh, she, she's very wild at heart, and she makes constant attempts to, uh, potentially bed, um, Akito in the most violent of ways she can think of, and, uh, she also provides a lot of... She also likes to crack jokes all the time. And as a way to guess I mask some of her more personal traits. Um, again, we'll get to that. And then there's uh, Arissa. Um, who is the daughter of Akita's adoptive family. She's a 12-year-old girl who shows up halfway through the series. And she is Akito's fiance. Um... This, of course, does not go over well with uh, Akiko because she does not approve of her of the adopted sister being the love interest because she wants to be the love interest. So um, eventually, they do get along, and she's basically there to be the manager of the uh, of the um, uh, of the house because. Um, Akito has to work a lot and he doesn't have time to fix a bunch of stuff so uh, she ends up being the uh, manager and takes care of things so there's not a ton of character about her we don't get to know much about her backstory but that's basically all I know about her and then there's uh, Gino who is uh, Akito's editor for the uh, I guess for the novel business that he uh, that he uh, submits his novels to. She gets into whole kinds of antics once she finds out about the people that Akito lives with. Up to this point, she hasn't had much interaction with Akito's house life. Well, that changed, and she starts thinking up... She starts um, thinking in her head possibilities because of... It doesn't not helped by the fact that Akito writes um, Siskon love novels, and while he doesn't uh, go after his own sister, the fact that his sister's a bro-con does not help. So, okay, so all these characters, too, all of them have a not very well hidden crush on uh, Akito, which hilarity ensues. It's a slice of life, slash comedy, slash harem, slash Siskon show, whatever. The Siskon stuff gets really mixed, pushed to the way, to the side. It's not the main important, and it's used for comedic relief or comedic effect. So, it's not like Kiss X Sis, where it gets to near creepy and rapey levels, um, and then the OVAs, oh, don't even get me started on Kiss X Sis. But, um, it's not, a, it's not serious. It's really part of the, um, comedy. I mean, Akiko is serious about wanting to, you know, wanting to, uh, be in a romantic relationship with her brother, but no one seems to take it seriously because I think in the end, Akiko is like, you know, he's my brother, I don't really have a way around this. Eventually I will, but I gotta put the brakes on a little bit. And I like the the humor of the series. I like um, the places it goes, because it's funny. And 
unlike the last anime I reviewed, Sanken Rea, when it does a character backstory, it actually makes sense, and it doesn't take the whole goddamn episode. I think the longest a character backstory went was a third of an episode, and it mattered. Like, it, when a, a character backstory gets uh, put into a series like this, it better freaking matter. And it did this really well. It mattered. It's It really saved them closer to the end, too, so... Um, which brings me to the ending, and small spoiler here, but you've probably already been spoiled this before. It's a bombshell that literally gets shot into the last scene of the series, um, uh, and it's said literally through text, Akito says, In actuality, there is no blood relation between me and Akiko. However, if she ever found this out, it might it might make it harder for me to resist her. And I was told that I was going to hate the ending. I don't really hate this ending, and I already knew that they weren't blood related from the start because if you look up the series, like the title of the series, it gets spoiled for you right away. So it, it's just after seeing the whole show and all the stuff, they just sort of end it there as a we'll go on living our happy lives sort of thing. But now I'm like, it's kind of a shitty way to end the show, especially when you drop a bombshell like that in the last minute or the last few minutes of the of the series. Uh, I don't know how far the manga or... Uh, novel series goes with this, but uh, I I don't know why they would do that um, unless they want to have a second season, but a lot of these harem shows don't normally get second seasons, and if they're popular enough to get one, you're not going to see it for a few years. Um, I remember what it took. It took what four or five years for the melancholy of Harhi Susan Mia to get a second season, and um, that one sort of really needed one. But um, a lot of these harem shows don't go past a season. Um, a lot of uh, anime companies would rather do a whole new harem series than do another season of one. Um, so we may never find out if anything's changed. Is it a satisfying ending? No, not really. Um, but, because we don't get to learn, like, what happens between these characters. But, uh, I didn't necessarily hate the ending. Um, but anyways, I'm just gonna get, this is going on long enough, I'm just gonna get to my final thoughts. Um, I liked the show. I thought it was funny, I thought it was cute. Um... And despite what the title says and, you know, Akiko's intentions, it's played up for comic relief, unlike Kiss X Sis, which played it up for serious. Or when Oribo, before Oribo uh, dropped its bombshell at the end of the series, um, which was also playing up a serious note of what if actually a brother and sister who were related got together, like, it didn't try to cross those bridges, and, yeah, it's a cop-out for the show to say in the last, uh, five minutes, oh, by the way, we're not blood-related, um, I don't hate this as much as I guess people would expect, but, um, I guess I should really end this off. Would I recommend this show? Um, if you like harem and comedies, sure. It's, I mean, you're not going to get much out of it than you would of a normal harem or comedy show, except for the fact that it has, you know, a sister with incestuous thoughts about her older brother, slightly older brother. Um, so... Yeah, I don't hate this show. I don't... 
It's not the best harem I've ever seen, but I enjoyed watching it. Um, with the exception of Anastasia, because every time she was on screen, it was like, oh my god, stop. Um, though, to be to be fair, near the end, she was as bad. It was really at the start... Uh, excuse me. It was really at the start where I wanted to pull my hair out whenever she talked, so... Um, Anyways, yeah, that's my thoughts on uh, Oni Eye. Uh, Funimation ha is releasing a Blu-ray DVD combo pack right now. You can watch all the episodes for free on their website if you want to check this anime out. And, uh, yeah, um, next time I'll maybe not talk, talk about something so weird, but... Excuse me. <clears throat> Who knows what will happen on this show. So, anyways, thanks for watching, guys.